Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next session of From Nothing, Milos' Story. We are nearing the end of Milos' Fall Festival. At the beginning of this session, it is 9 o'clock at night, and you are on your way towards the Griffin's Bag. So, before anything else, I need to make a roll. Boy. Okay. I rolled... On a D100, I rolled a 1. Oh. So you make it to the Griffin's Bag, quiet as can be. Absolutely <laughs> no one pays any interest in you. <laughs> in fact, you don't think anybody else is even in the city right now with a 1. So quiet. Dead so quiet. quiet. A lot of people hiding and licking their wounds and trying to avoid the big guy. That's exactly what is happening, you think. Uh, okay. One moment here. As you enter the Griffin's Bag, it is just as well lit and uplifting as it always has been every time you've been here. Uh, there is no one else in the Griffin's Bag, except for Glass himself. Uh, he is seated in an overstuffed chair next to the front counter, and as you enter, he says, Ah, it has been uh, maybe a couple hours since I had a visitor. Oh, really? Uh it has been very it, quiet for me. It does not look it, that way for you. It has been a long day, and it's not over yet, but... Uh, you are nearing the end. So, you are welcome <laughs> to take shelter here, and of course you are welcome to take part in my uh, sugary rice cakes. And you see on the counter are these pans of... They're, they're, they look very squishy. Um... They seem to jiggle just as you look at them, and they smell very sweet and of brown sugar. I'm not going to lie, I've been looking forward to this all day. Good, good. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy. Take two. <clears throat> uh, but don't eat, don't eat them right away. Uh, just, just the one. Right. Um, uh. If you eat one of his rice cakes, you gain half, uh, you gain two spell slots, just period. You just gain two spell slots. Um, Wait. Do I gain two spell well, slots Well, you back? as a warlock, it doesn't really help you. It much. doesn't really, yeah. Um, but... I had, because my short rest will also give me those back. Yes. But the others, um, I've got some folks who could use that. Oh, yes. So, uh, so let me go ahead and account for that here. Uh, Duracon gains two first level spell slots and one second level spell slot as that is half of his roster uh i don't have derricon i have the wrong game open i'm sorry about that hold on it's okay it took me a second because i was like wait we fought him <laughs> i am a fool you're not a fool you have a lot of things to keep track of okay almost done let me pull up the proper folder there it is okay yep this is the right one Okay. Ahem. Sabratha gains two first level spell cell slots. There we go. And one second level. Uh, except she has a second level, so she does not get that benefit. Um, Callie. Okay. Stoic could use that too. Stoic, yes. Stoic. He spent his smite. Stoic gains two first level spell slots, which is more than half, but it rounds up. Mm. He has three total. Uh, Skolna just enjoys the taste. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where Milos is at. He's just having fun eating the sugary treat. Um, yeah. But and we can take our short rest. Which I need to spend some uh, hit dice. Where yes. is my button? I believe your whole team Same. needs to short rest here. Yeah. Yep. Oh, look at that. Sabratha has two hit dice available. Hit. <laughs> Got to reroll that. Okay. That so right. is at 24 out of 26 now. What well, can't be right? Um, I clicked on my sheet in in Foundry and it's saying that I have all three hit dice available, which I know is not true. It doesn't. Uh, so if you've been using it with D&D Beyond, it doesn't Yeah, it doesn't count. track. No. So I imagine check. you probably have one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that is correct. Because, yeah, it looks like it was. I was doing this on D and D Beyond earlier, so. 
I switched over partway through. So I will roll my one hit die. Skolan did not get touched in the last encounter. She still has full health. <laughs> ding, dang it. No, I don't want that. I want my short rest button. What have I done? One sec. No, I don't. Here it is. The thing that looks like a bed. No, nope, not long rest. The other one. Come on, so. There we go. Okay. I need to change this. It says three available, but it's not true. There, it, one. It is not important. Oh, we okay. keep track of it. There we go. It. Yeah. So that was a good roll. <laughs> so it was. And Milos is feeling much better about okay. life. Your team is also looking much recovered. Stoic and Sabratha are the only ones that are not fully restored, but they're pretty close. Yeah. Milos is still hurt, but he's so much better. With some spell slots restored, your party looks remarkably heartened. Um, and over your short rest, it's comfortable. So... At the end of your short rest, it is 10 o'clock at night. Thank you so much. Of course, of course. And I wish you luck in this last stretch of the fall festival. I appreciate it. I'm sure I will be seeing you again. Uh, yeah. Just uh, not tonight. Uh, <laughs> Good let's luck. go, folks. Everybody got every everything we need? Your team kind of nods and All right. follow you. Off we go. And so, as you emerge out into the streets of Ferrum, let's see where your next encounter will take place. Please roll me a d6. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a d20. No, no, two d20s. Why would I ever need to do that? Nine! Roll me a d2, please. I accidentally rolled a d3 because I can't type. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me a d4. Your oh team boy. is surprised. Okay. One moment while the scene renders. Okay, here is what happens. No, let me let me make sure Milos has his. Oh, he does. Never mind. The temp HP is on. As all of you are making your way up through the chapel gate, it is sudden and startling when coming out of the trees, an enormous axe comes crashing down on you, Milos. Oh boy. As a half-ogre suddenly reveals itself, 
you just hear as it brings this axe down upon you. That's a 24 to hit you. Uh, yeah, that hit. Yes, that would hit any of you, I'm afraid. Uh, you take 18 points of slashing damage. Ow, okay. Uh, that is its surprise round. The following one is going to emerge as it swings at Skolna. And it hits with a 21. Skolna takes 13 points of slashing damage. Please roll initiative. You are caught off guard, it seems. Absolutely. That was two natural ones. Uh, Skolna, suddenly alert and aware that they are being that you're all being attacked, will bonus action uh, disengage. Uh, and will raise the bow to shoot at the one that's in melee, because the other one was in melee with her. Uh, and she's going to loose an arrow at that one. That's a 15 to hit, which does hit. That's good. Okay. Uh, that half ogre takes nine points of piercing damage. And Skolna will continue to move until she's here, safe in half cover. Ooh. The half ogre that slashed at you uh, roars at the arrow in him now and is going to... Well, it's in melee with the three of you, so he's going to just continue the fight that he's begun. Mm. That's an 11 to hit. That doesn't hit you at all. Yay. Uh, that's its turn. <laughs> uh, these enemies really have the uh, the ambush is where they excel. They're, they're definitely here in the ambush. Uh, Sabratha is going to... What would you have Sabratha do? Heal you or focus them? Um... Focus them. Okay. She f she scowls at the one that struck you and is going to toll the dead. It must make a wisdom saving throw. Shockingly, half ogres are not very wise. It rolled a 3 minus 1 for a 2. Okay, uh, let me roll the d12. Okay. Sorry. The half ogre takes 10 points of necrotic damage from the Toll of the Dead. Uh, it's now the other half ogre's turn. This one's going to step forward uh, and join the fray. I will roll to see who it swings at. Helos. Oh no. All right, well, it's swinging at you. That is a 22 to hit. Yeah, that hit. Yeah. Uh, you take 14 points of slashing damage. Okay. Milos is down. Okay, Milos is unconscious. Next. Stoic. Ugh. This is not a good start. <laughs> he will. Uh, what does he do? What would you have me? Uh, not me. What would you have Stoic do? Um. He can action get you up, or he can fight. Uh. I mean. I'm going to be making a death save on my turn. Yes. And I think I think even though he's a very useful fighter, I think I have to have him get me up. Okay. So that uh, he will use a potion and bring you back to consciousness. Okay. You are at 10 hit points. Okay. Oops, not 110. Although prone. Yeah. 
he kind of pats you on the shoulder as you open your eyes, and he says, That was quick, wasn't it? Ow. Yep. <laughs> That's his turn. Uh, Callie is in melee, and she doesn't like it. Um, she'll cast Magic Missile. Yeah, that's what she'll do. Uh, okay, so the first dart hits the first half ogre for three. The second one hits him for... Four. And the last one hits him for... Four. Okay. Uh, she deals 11 hit, po hit points of damage to this half ogre, which is all he had. So he falls over. Yay! Uh, Callie will stay right where she is because she did not disengage. Milos, you're up. So I'm on the ground, and this half ogre is next this to me on the ground. This one is unconscious, yeah. Um, can I use my bonus action to try and get a token off him? Yeah, you just do that. He's unconscious. Okay, I do that. Okay, let me roll. It is not their real totem. You were still in Dang. the fight. It was worth a try. It was. All right. So that's my movement to stand. Mm -hmm. You are now standing. Um, so I can either use my action to disengage, or I can use my action to hit. Mm -hmm. um, looking at... <coughs> He's untouched. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna hit him. Okay. Give it a swing. This may be dumb, but I'm doing it. Their AC is 12. You yeah, hit. That's a 16. Yeah, you hit. Okay, eight points of bludgeoning damage. <laughs> there is a crack of bone as the mace slams into something important for the half ogre. <laughs> you! Ugh. Yeah, me. Well, <laughs> that's all he has to say. Uh, uh, nice hit. Skulna! Right? Yeah. It is Skulna's turn. Skulna uh, will take the hint and lose an arrow at the one that you just slammed. Seeing they're not hard to hit, she doesn't spend a whole lot of time trying to be sneaky, which is a mistake, because she rolled a 10 to hit. Oh, no. Uh, so the arrow, just right over it, uh, and you hear Skulna say, shit. Um, <laughs> she will run over here and bonus action hide. Uh, that is what happens when you become complacent, Skulna. Me, as I tried myself. Rough. <laughs> Um, Sabroth is in melee with this half ogre. Uh, she could take a stab, or she could use a spell. What would you like her to do? Let's Toll the Dead. Toll the Dead. Okay, wisdom saving throw. Let's see what he's got. Now that he's... Natural 20 for a 19. Yeah, okay. So, he successfully Can't do nothing about Toll that. the Dead. Uh, yeah. It's now the half ogre's turn. Uh, the half ogre, you whacked it. Sabratha spelled it and failed, so it's gonna go for you. Fair enough. Uh, but a fourteen does not hit you, I believe. No, it does not. Okay, that's his turn. Stoic. Uh, now I get the swing, and <laughs> he slash the great sword. Uh, he hits with a seventeen. Uh, and he will deal 11 points of slashing damage. Very good. Callie's turn. Um, Callie is going to... What is she going to do? What would you have her do? She doesn't want to burn another spell slot unless she has to. No, I wouldn't... I... <laughs> Sorry, I choked you got a cough drop because I'm a dumbass. Oh! I wouldn't I wouldn't burn a spell slot. Um but she's still in melee with it, right? Yep. Yeah. 
Well, she can either firebolt at disadvantage. In fact, that's what I'm going to say she should do because... Okay. Like Skolna, I am overconfident. <laughs> she firebolts at disadvantage and hits with a 19. Great. Basically just throwing the firebolt straight up into the thing's face. It takes yep. nine points of fire damage. Cool. Callie says, take that, you big lug! Uh, Milos. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna swing the mace again. Sure. This thing is barely standing. It looks like after that firebolt to the head, it's like way yeah. like barely keeping its balance. That's what you get. <laughs> uh, that was me. That was not Milos. I see. I was like, that's out of character for Milos. Milos would not, Milos would not say that. Roll your attack. Oh. Uh, their AC is 12, a 10 misses. That's a 10. Damn. That's what you get. Okay. Yeah, uh, that is what I get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get what you get. You don't get upset. Skullnut will poke out. She's hidden. She attacks with the short bow with advantage. That super hits. Uh, okay, I Yay. don't think she can do less than two hit points of damage, so it is the Yay. Key. All right. The half ogre <laughs> slumps over. Let's see if either of these guys have anything. I kind of doubt it, but it's worth checking. Okay. Before we take his uh, totem. Okay. Uh, roll me investigation. Or rather... Uh, Callie, like... could you take a look at this? I, of course I can. I don't mind getting my hands a little dirty. And she begins to sift through the pockets. Roll me a D100. Basically, the middle of the road. 51. Okay, hold on. Oh, hold on. I've lost my page. Oh, no. One moment, please. One moment, though. Okay, 51. Please roll me a another D100. Uh, from one of the half ogre's pockets, a bunch of other what look like buttons and other just useless refuse and like a needle and thread, she pulls out and a a well-cut Obsidian chalice. What is that? I mean, it's a cup. It looks like some sort of the ritual glass. Yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about that, but it looks fancy. Uh, it does. Do you know anything about... She glances at the half-ogres and says, The religions of half-ogres? Do they have a different religion than anybody else? I don't know. Milo scratches his head and kind of looks at Sabratha. Uh, Sabratha will roll a, roll a religion check. Uh, <laughs> she shrugs and she says, I imagine it's no worthwhile cause for any of us to look into. They are monsters, after all. She doesn't know. <laughs> well, all right. I guess we just take the totem, then. I'm keeping this. Sure. I, I don't I don't know what it does, if anything. It's cup. But, uh, yep, definitely a cup. It's a trophy of its victory. Right. That's what it does. It reminds me of this, when we beat the shit out of two half-ogres. Although you did get yeah. slammed good and proper. I really did. I'm gonna cast false life on myself. Okay. <laughs> Get uh, my tip back up. Yeah, good call. As Skullno approaches, uh, she says, "So are we just hanging out here or what?" No, I guess we should get get the totem and get moving. Uh, and as you leave the chapel gate in search of another encounter, it is now ten thirty at night. Seven Man, ten. I keep. Getting seven. I'm not complaining. 
I was like, that's a good roll. I mean, it could be worse. It's just funny that it's like always seven. It is there always seven somehow. All right, off we go. All right, roll me a d6. Let's see where your next encounter is taking place. All the way across town. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, that'll lead us some time. Yep. Go ahead and roll me a uh, roll me a d20. Okay. Roll me a d2. Okay. It is different. All right. Roll me a d4. Okay. That's interesting. It is while your group is passing through the market that you hear this the strange chittering noises. Um, they're coming from one of the alleys, and as I pull you over here, you can go ahead and set yourselves up. Hold on a minute. Okay. So, where do you hear this chittering coming from? Might as well be over here. Okay. How do you want to set up? Sorry, I was I briefly confused myself with the vases here. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to put Milos here. And I've had good luck putting Skolna on this roof, so I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, and I'm going to put... Callie can be back... Actually, I'm going to put Callie all the way back here so that she she might have to move a little bit to get a uh, line of sight, but I want her protected. Okay, so you want her here? Yeah, so that she's... Okay. Like, are there crates? See. Are there crates and shit under here? Yeah, she can be in half cover. Okay, and then Sabratha can be back over here. No, I'm lying. Stoic can be back over here. And, um, and Sabratha can be back over here with Milos. Okay. All right. So. You've rolled a weird encounter. Oh, boy. <laughs> I like uh, the weird stuff. For the sake of this, I'd like your team to please roll me initiative. Okay. Okay. Looks like we're getting tired. <laughs> yeah. Even Skulna. <laughs> Okay, so, as the chittering continues, your team should roll me stealth at advantage. Okay. So, let me roll that Let's for go. these guys. A straight roll for both. Uh, Not great. Your team rolled pretty good, though. That's good. And your enemy... Rolled pretty bad. It looked like it was going to be a 15, and then it was a 2. Mm. <laughs> Alright. So. Let's see. Emerging from the alley are red creatures, each one medium-sized, and you've heard of them. They're rust monsters. A veritable cluster of them enter through the alley, swarming and looking all over the walls. You see several of them wear totems. You don't know which are real and which are not. 
but there's a lot of rust monsters. He ordered a blood rust monster. Yeah. <laughs> because random, because you have, because I As they, anyway. You know that if they get any closer, the goose will They're be cooked, start, and so... Start eating our friggin' armor. And your us. surprise round should happen now. Okay. What uh, is Skolna do? She's first in your order. Um... Shoot one. Okay, she'll shoot the first one. Yeah. With advantage. Their AC is 14. They're not hard to hit. She hits it with a 23. Okay, she deals 14 points of damage to the first rust monster. Nice. Uh, she will then try and back up a little bit. Now Callie's turn. Uh, Callie, safe in her spot, is going to... Well, this might be worth blowing a spell slot on. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Um, mm. our... She could Burning Hands, she could Agnazar Scorcher, or she could Shatter. The trouble with Shatter is that it's so loud, but it could get, like, all of them. Yes. Um... One second, I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll a wisdom check for Milos to make this decision. To see if he is gonna indicate to her to just blow them up. I don't. I think. I think. I don't think we should shatter. I think that there's too many really big things that we don't want to draw the attention of. Okay. So, how? What is the most you can get of them without using her big noisy spell? Uh, if she Agnazar is Scorchard, she could, she could get, uh, let's see, she could get six with that, uh, but that's a second level spell slot. With a Burning Hands, mm. she could get five. Okay, let's do Burning Hands. Okay, she climbs up over the thing and casts Burning Hands. Uh, let's see, if I was right in my estimations. Okay, I was close. She can get four. Eh, Close enough for government work. Uh, and they will make dexterity saving throws. DC is 14. The first one fails. The second one succeeds. The third one succeeds. And the fourth one fails. So two success, two failure. I'll roll damage. Uh, that is 11 points of fire damage to the one who's failed, and 5 to those who succeeded. So this one and this one take 5. And this one and this one take 11. Got it. As the flame washes out from Callie's fingertips, she just says, Take this, you red bastards! And then when it clears away and they're all still there, she just says, well, right. ah, and she will jump back behind the crates. As it is a surprise round, they do not get a reaction. Okay, uh, that was Callie's turn. Milos. Okay, Milos is going to scoot forward, and he's going to Eldritch Blast the first one. Okay, here. roll your attack. Eldritch Blast. You Rat. have advantage? Oh, good. Because that sucks. There we go. Okay. 22 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Eldritch Boulder. The rock flies forth, and the rust monster as it slams into it. Uh, five points of force damage. Okay. And then he's going to run back. Uh, Sabratha will do something. What will she do? She doesn't really have much uh, as far as early spells, but she could do something like Flaming Sphere. However, if she did, she'd be out of second levels. Ah, uh, man. Oh, she has burning hands as a light cleric. Yeah, let's do that. Everybody burning hands. She will 
uh, similarly run up. Uh, let's see. She'll get here. She'll get more this way. And since it's a surprise round, they won't have a reaction. Actually, or... maybe she would breath weapon. She just got it. Oh, yeah, she just got her breath weapon back. Well, that's pretty much the same, right? Why not? Sure. Okay. Yeah, she opens her mouth. It looks cool. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. And as the ice cascades forth, uh, they need to make constitution saving throws, which looks an awful lot like their dexterity saving throw. That's a failure. That's a failure. That's a success. And that's a success. So, again, two failures, two, two successes. Two. All right, uh, let's roll damage. Uh, oh, she rolled pretty good. That's 10 points of cold damage. Uh, okay, so let's see. This one failed. So he takes 10. This one failed. So it takes 10. This one succeeds, takes 5. This one succeeds, takes 5. Okay. Uh, she wipes her mouth with a handkerchief <laughs> and steps back away. Very nice. Proper as always. Okay. <laughs> Stoic's turn. Okay. Does he have any ranged? Just the yeah, javelin? Yeah, I mean, he's javelins. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and throw a javelin. I know he would probably prefer... I just don't want him to get... That's fair. Yeah, uh, he throws javelins. Uh, he throws javelin at the nearest one, I think. Yeah, it makes sense. He rolled a natural one, but he has advantage. Hold on, let me roll it again. That's a 23 to hit. That certainly yeah. hits. Rolling damage. Nine points of piercing damage. Uh, okay, that's his turn. Uh, and I believe that's the end of your surprise round, so now the yep. rust monsters roll initiative. Well, there are many of them, they're not very fast. Well, we weren't very fast with either. No, no, you were not. Okay. The combat begins in true form. This rust monster, uh, the one in the back just and it will uh, surge forward and it's going to use its antennae uh, it looks around it can see stoic it can see sabratha it can see Callie. Uh, It. I'm going to roll a d3 okay it looks at stoic uh, and it is going to target his armor. Ah. Uh, he needs to make a dexterity saving throw. He's not good at these. He rolled a one for a total oh. of zero. Oh no. So he like, this thing looks at him and still like just kind of glances and says, what is it doing? And his armor begins to rust. His AC is reduced by one. Uh, hold on. Yeah, okay, so it runs up to him and begins to deteriorate his armor. It? Uh, let me read this. Okay, yes, that is what happens. Um, Stoic says, I don't know what's happening, as the rust monster has kind of crawled up and is its mandibles are scratching at the rust coming off of Stoic's uh, plate armor. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> next Nothing round, good. Rust Monster. Uh, I think there is rust on the field, so this rust monster is also going to move up to Stoic and oh, use no. its antenna. He needs to make another dexterity saving throw because this is what happens when someone in full plate is encountered by rust monsters. And he rolls yeah. an eight. Okay, his oh. armor is reduced to 16. Uh, hold on. Let me change this. Okay, if his armor is reduced to 10, 
it goes away and it's down to 16. Um, Stalek is getting swarmed by rust monsters. Uh, the next rust monster, it's going to do that. There's rust on the field. It will run up and swarm him as well. Another dexterity oh. save is required. He has to pass one of these. That's an eight. Bro. Oh, no. No, okay, I... his armor is now a 15. What is happening? <laughs> he is trying to fend off these rust monsters. Uh, okay, it's the next one's turn. Uh, it's going to... Can it even get to it? It can't. It's going to oh, as no. well. They, there's rust. They smell it. Yeah. They want it. Uh, saving throw from Stoic. That is a nine. Minus one for another eight. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, his armor is now a 14. His full plate is a mess. It is basically just a caress, and the rest of it is almost completely orange with rust. And it's almost like clouds of rust are billowing off of Stoic at this moment. Um, it's now Skola's turn. Uh, yeah. Um... Can she shoot one of the ones that is trying to eat away? Yes, she can certainly try. She will appear over this. She was hidden. Uh, she will attack with advantage. Uh, she'll go for the one that looks the worst. Just try and just reduce the number. Yeah. Uh, that's a 25 to hit. She hits. Okay, she doesn't deal a whole lot of damage, but it is enough to kill him. Uh, she deals 10 points of piercing damage, which slays this rust monster, which slumps off of him onto the ground. Uh, and then she will step back. Uh, but she's hidden up here already, so she can't yeah. really sneak up there again. Next, it's more rust monster's turn. Uh, this one's going to get underneath the steeple of the building and go after Stoic. I need him to make a dexterity saving throw. Stoic! <laughs> That's a two for a oh. one total. Uh, okay, his armor is now AC of 14. He's clearly very overwhelmed by this. Oh, yeah. He like, is. They're just clawing at his armor. They're not even hitting him. They're just no. eating the metal he's wearing. And he. Part of him was like, this tickles! Oh, get off me! And just. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, a rust monster that has been untouched by all the area of effect spells and such. Uh, crawls over the corpse of its ally and oh. will uh, also try and get him with its antenna. He needs to make a dexterity saving throw. That's a 10 minus 1 for a 9. The DC he, he is, is not, 11. He can't, he can't make a single one of these saves. Poor Stoic. Okay, his AC is now a 13. Uh, I think his armor is about to break. Let me yeah. look at it. Yeah. Can you... If he fails two more, it's gone. Uh, all right. <laughs> Callie. <laughs> Callie, um, uh, who's next to you, she looks over and says, They're swarming all over him! We've got to get the damn things off him. Uh... She will. What will she do? Um, she doesn't want to shatter because he's right in the middle of them. Yeah. Uh, she could. Magic missile again. Um, could or she, she could firebolt. We just try and pick them off. Um. How many spell? I mean. She just got two spell slots back, so we could. She has well, one first level and two second levels. <clears throat> like she could, she could run up it. Well, hmm. <laughs> like she could burning hands again and like just get these three without hitting him, or even. But she wouldn't be able to disengage. She wouldn't be able to disengage. You're right. And that is uh, a bunch of rust monsters. Whether that's a bunch, and we don't we don't want her up in there. So. I guess just pick him off with Firebolt and, um... Hope he passes a fucking save. Hope he passes a save. Okay, she casts a Firebolt at the ones that look weaker. 
but an 11 will not hit. Oh, no. My dice are killing your team. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, well, they're stoic deck safe. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> this rust monster's turn. It will join the swarm on stoic. Fucking smorgasbord over there. He's got full plate armor. That is candy yeah. to these things. Uh, he will make a dexterity save against this antenna. DC 11. That's a 5. Oh my god. His AC is now 12. Okay. If he fails one more... No, he can fail... Uh, he can fail two more. Because it's got his AC's got to be 10 mm. for his armor mm -hmm. to fall off. Uh, and he hasn't even gotten to go yet. <laughs> yeah. Milos. Uh, Milos is going to run out of cover, and he's going to... Well, there's two things that I could do. Uh, Milos could shatter. Like, we were trying Which to avoid the noise. Be, yeah, you could. And I could try to center it so that it doesn't hit Stoic, but could get, like, these four. This is a thing you can choose to do. Ugh. I just, his armor is about to go. He hasn't been able to make a single save. Um, and I really, really do not want him to get eaten by rust monsters. So I think I'm going to do it. Okay. It's, um, it's, it's, ugh, okay. <laughs> All right, so I need to just figure out where to put it so that it can hit. It looks like it looks like that won't hit Stoic. Yeah, that'll hit three or will of them. It? That will not okay. hit Stoic. Okay. What's your spell save? Uh. Uh. It's a Constitution fourteen. Okay. Uh, one moment. And I, and I guess I'll roll the damage either way. Yeah, you. You should. Okay. Uh, the one nearest the blast failed. The uppermost one succeeded. Well, that's the shitty roll. Sometimes that is how it goes. Yeah. And the leftmost one fails. Six points of thunder damage. Okay, so the nearest one takes six. The leftmost one takes six. The farthest most one takes three. None of them perish. And there's a big boom. Yes, as the shadow. And, <laughs> and Milos kind of winces. Ah, I was hoping that would hurt more of them. All right. Um, and uh, that was, I think, I think that was all of his movement to get out there. Um, bonus action. No. Yeah. That's my turn. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that was an unfortunate sp spell cast of shatter. If, if only the dice had been better. Oh, That's well. how it goes. I still think I still think strategically trying to take out more of them while they're doing that to to, to stoic was what he had to do. So it's I'm fair. Not gonna, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to cry about it. Sabratha will burning hands this time. Uh, she will yeah. run up uh, and cast burning hands on the same ones. Yeah spell she always has as a light cleric. Mural damage. And his dexterity saves from the three of them. One success. Okay. So two of them succeeded. One of them failed. Again. Oh, no, it was the other way around the other time. Okay, well, the one who failed has three hit points, so immediately perishes. Uh, this one takes half of... Okay, so it takes seven points of fire damage. This one is slain as well. Yay! Uh, this one is still alive. Uh, okay. It's now 
the rust monster, this rust monster's turn. Uh, there are more targets in view, but yeah. Stoic is currently rusting, and the iron set tells me that it wants to go for that. I will roll with a, okay. with an emphasis on Stoic. Okay, yeah, it goes to Stoic. <laughs> Uh, okay, Stoic, please make a deck save. Natural 20! Yay! He does not... He dodges the antenna of that one, finally. Perhaps some of the pressure let off and he can finally see what's happening to him. Yeah. Uh, it's now Stoic's turn. Uh, and he, like, just peppered in rust and armor falling apart. He looks around and says, Get off of me and he will swing the great sword uh angrily yeah <laughs> but a 13 won't hit oh no he's just angry okay this is not stoic's turn okay uh this rust monster the one right in front of sabratha is currently feasting and will require another deck save from stoic no. They're not even trying to hurt him. They're just trying to yeah. get his armor. <sighs> That's a 10 for a 9. Mm. Stoic's armor has an AC of 11. One more failed save, and he will no longer have armor. Okay. It is now the next Rust Monster's turn. There's a couple of dead ones. Let me remove them from the... Yeah, just to it make it a little easier to see. Okay. Yes. Uh, let me get this one. Not that one. This one. Okay, they're not actually on the roof. I'm just moving them so I can keep track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Because it was getting kind of hard to tell who I could target over there. This rust monster will demand a deck save from Stoic, upon which he natural ones. Oh, no. It's as no, though no, he doing. just... The great sword, he dro it like drops down to his hips, and he just accepts as the last rust monster... To, like just slurps up the last. So it says, Fine. His armor powders away, and he is remaining without any armor whatsoever. Uh, his AC is now a nine. As he stands there in the padded jack that he wears beneath the armor, it is stained red from rust. Little bits of chain mail falling away from the joints. And he looks over the rust monsters at you, Milos, and he says, This is the worst day I've ever had. This is pretty bad. The rust monsters uh, are piling over this pile of rusted iron. Uh, they don't seem interested in stoic or any of anything else. They are happily consuming his full plate. Uh, it's now Skolna's turn. Skolna will peer over the side, see Stoic missing his armor, and kind of wince. Uh, she will raise her short bow and loose an arrow. Uh, with a 17, that will certainly hit. She's aiming for this one. Let me roll damage plus sneak attack because he's in melee. That is an 18 to 18 damage, not an 18 hit. Uh, okay, that rust monster dies. Next, this rust monster, having they have eaten the armor off of Stoic, it has many other targets. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Stoic has a great sword. Sabratha has what is Sabratha wearing? Leather. It wouldn't care about that. Uh, but it does see you have a breastplate and a shield, Milos. Yeah, I'm in scale. Uh, oh, you're in scale mail. That's even better. Okay. Yeah. Um, delicious, I'm going... delicious scale mail. <laughs> I'm going to roll a d6. Um, on a 4 to 6, it's going after you. On a 1 to 3, it's going after Stoic's Greatsword. This rust monster sniffing out the metal, uh, departs from Stoic and approaches you. Stoic will take an attack of opportunity. He hits with an 18. Uh, 
and he will deal 10 points of slashing damage. Yeah! Uh, but that being said, the rust monster still approaches you, Milos, and I need you to make a dexterity saving throw as it's antennae up towards your scale mail. Okay. I'm actually going to roll to see what it's going for here. It doesn't matter. You succeed. You dodge its antennae. <laughs> uh, it's now Callie's turn. Uh, Callie will s hop over the crates and say, Oh, not him too! And she will uh, hurl a firebolt. Uh, at the... She says that at the one that's attacking you, but she's going to throw it at the one that's hurt. Uh, which yeah. is a 21 to hit, so that certainly hits. And she deals five points of fire damage to it. Okay. I what my mace is made of. Iron and wood. Okay. Milos. Okay, I guess I'm going to hit it, or try to hit it. Okay. Um... Seems slightly awk to hit it with the uh, iron, but... it's It has to yeah. uh, magically corrode it, which it has it to do with its antenna. It hasn't yet managed to do. No, yeah. you dodged it, uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, right. you hit. <laughs> you bonk the rust monster. Six points of damage. Okay, this one is... Okay. Anything else in your turn? Um... Nah. All right. I don't. I don't really want to provoke an attack of opportunity, so I'm just gonna stay where I am. Okay. Sabratha, so who's in melee, will draw her dirk and attack the one in front of her with advantage because of flanking. She it's a 22 to hit. She will slash it, and it takes seven points of piercing damage and falls from Yay. this world. Uh, okay. This rust monster. Uh, I'm going to roll to see what it's going for. Uh, it turns around and is going to attempt to rust Sabratha's Dirk. Oh. Uh, Sabratha will make a dexterity saving throw. She's pretty good at these. DC's 11. Shouldn't have said that. She oh. rolled a 6. Okay. Uh, okay, how does this work on a weapon? Let me see here. Okay. The, the weapon takes a permanent and cumulative minus 1 penalty to damage rolls. Oof. Oof. Making a note. Jesus. Well, she needs it later. I have some spare daggers. It's not a dagger. It's like a short sword. Um, oh, okay. Well, I can't help with that. That's true. <laughs> uh, she, you, as the rust begins to take over the weapon, you see Sabratha curse, and she says, That was my favorite knife. Uh, and Stoic... That was my glance, favorite knife. <laughs> ...glances up at her and says, You don't say... Really? That was your favorite knife? And she, she looks up and says, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he will swing the great sword. He's very frustrated right now. Uh, okay. That hits with a 22. Rolling damage. 12 points of slashing damage uh, to this rust monster, which is now barely alive. Okay, next, we are back to the rest monsters. Let me remove this combatant from the initiative. Okay, this one will turn, uh, and it likes Stoic's greatsword, so it's going to try and go for it. Stoic oh, is going no. to make a deck save. That's a six. Oh. Stoic's greatsword takes a minus one. Hold on. Good lord. Okay. <sighs> I told you this was a weird encounter. I didn't realize it how is. weird. Uh, it's now Skolna's turn. Skolna um, is going to... She doesn't want to get anywhere near these things. Um, no. 
she will lose her uh, an arrow at the one between Zavroth and Stark. Uh, that is a 12 to hit, which misses. Oh. Okay. Um, she's going to move over here, hopping off the roof. Uh, it's now the rust monster in front of you, Milos. Deck safe, please. It's going for your shield this time. Mm. Uh, 11 is the DC. You succeed. Very close. Yeah. Kind of like yanked the shield out of the way of the last moment. Like, ah! <laughs> uh, okay. It's now Callie's turn. Um, I think Callie's going to go after the one in front of you now. A 12 to hit. That misses. Um, and after Callie's turn, you hear oh, heavy shit. footsteps approaching from your west. Uh, you knew that was coming. Callie says, What's that? Something big. Uh, perhaps we should cut and run. And now it's your turn. Ugh. Amilos is gonna swing his mace. Oh, you're set. Yeah, that hits. Ugh. Five damage. Fucking min. Oh well. All right. Uh, at the end of your turn, Sabratha, hearing this happen, looks down at the rust monster at her feet, and is going to pluck the totem from around its neck, hoping it might be the real one. I'm gonna roll a d8. On an eight, it's the real one. That's a three. It was not. There were there were just so many that I didn't think that it was worth it. To sure. Start. I mean, yeah. she can do that as a bonus action because it's unconscious. Yeah. yeah. She will then stab at a minus one the rust monster. Right Is it there. a minus one to hit and damage or just damage? Just damage. Okay. Uh, 15 to hit. She deals six damage minus one for five. The rust monster has five hit points. It dies. Ha! Huh. Uh, Stoic's turn. Whoopsie. Uh, Stoic is going to bonus action pluck the totem from that one that she just killed. I roll a d7. On a 7. That was a 7. Ah. Uh, the rust monster is <laughs> I'll teleport. And the combat ends. <sighs> Okay, so Stoic has another real one. Yes. And Sabratha has another fake one. Correct. Um, Stoic uh, looks at you and says, I don't know about you, but until I have some sort of protection, I don't want to fight anything big, if that's all right. Let's run. Uh, okay, so because you are leaving before the encounter actually would have ended by combat, you can get away safely. Okay. <laughs> Which means it is now 11 o'clock at night. Okay, what can we do about about this, about all of this? Do you, uh, I could give you, I still have my shield, I could give you my armor, I don't think it would fit. Um, you're a bit bigger than me. I can make it work if we have the time, if you're alright with not having armor. Well, I've, I've got a shield and, and frankly, I, I do okay at ranged, so I think it's better for me to be without than you. He, like, brushes the rust, and then he eventually just takes the padded jack off and begins to shake it out, and he says, all right, okay. Uh, but let's let's just hide in this alley real quick and uh, change. Okay, so to remove medium armor, it takes a minute. Yeah. 
uh, to don medium armor, it takes like five minutes. Okay, um, so we're going to spend like six minutes, trading seven armor. minutes trading armor. I'm just going to give him my scale, so I'm going to take that off, and okay. I'll just have my shield um, and my shirt. <laughs> uh, because I just, I feel like we're going to be better situated if, let me just, uh, 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 uh it's not it's not flat footed. I don't have zero armor class. Your AC is going to be uh ten plus your dex. Yeah, so it'll be Okay, how do I just tell it to hang on. I can do this. I'm gonna go into my inventory and unequip. Where's the there's gotta be an unequip button. Damn yeah, it. You if you click on the armor on the right hand side you wear it look a little person next to it uh -huh. okay i took it off okay, okay now it's saying that my armor class is two which is not correct it should be 14 because i have a dex plus two and a shield it's just like ignoring the dex and also the 10 that's the whatever we know what it is yeah uh, Stoic, with your scale mill on, his armor is 13. Okay. 13 is better than 9. It is. Uh, he... It's... It doesn't fit him perfectly, obviously. Yeah. Uh, he has to forego some of the parts. Um, he's not wearing yeah. the pauldrons, because it just wouldn't... It, it wouldn't would not close. fit. Um, um, and I'm, I'm at 10 hit points right now, so I am going to use one of my potions of healing in this break because we only have an hour left and uh, I just walking into a combat right now with 10 hit points seems like a stupid plan to me. It and does. I think, and I think everyone else is mostly okay after our short rest. Yeah, you guys didn't actually take much damage in that encounter. We it just was... lost the armor, yeah. Yes. So I'm, but I'm going to take the full, the full 10 hit points because I'm not using a bonus action to do it so um so i will just remove that from my inventory i said i would remove it from my inventory come on maybe delete just unequip it we'll deal with it later it's not a big deal okay Okay, I just have it. It's labeled zero now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Why didn't it? Okay, hang on. It's not. It's not letting me heal. What did I do? Somehow, I am going to heal myself with this healing potion. Uh, it's updating with your D and D Beyond. Is what's going on? Oh. No, my D&D Beyond is at full health. I'm just going to close it, see if that helps. Probably. Uh, if anything? I place your token here, you... Oh, maybe it's because my token's not on this map. There we go. Okay. Much better. All right. So, so, it is the last hour of the Fall Festival. The enemies that still remain out in the Ferrum's main streets are remarkably dangerous uh, the few surviving contracting teams and any other student teams they are either being extremely careful or they're no longer part of the fall festival so you have a couple ways you can handle the last hour and we're going to break down the last hour by every 10 minutes okay now that we've spent 6 or 7 minutes changing our Close. Yeah, so that was the first ten minutes. Um, I'm going okay. to need. To, I'm going to roll to see if something encountered you in this alley. While we were changing our armor, yeah. That's a three. So you were lucky. Nothing found you whilst you were doing this. So that's your first ten minutes wasted. Is just trading armor, getting stoic to a place where he might be able to fight without immediately getting hit all the time. Yeah. Um, so. You have 50 minutes 
until the fall festival ends, until that bell sounds, until Tabernak announces the end of the celebration. For the first 10 minutes, and every 10 minutes after, I'm going to ask you how you want to handle it. You have a few options. You could try to hunt, and by hunting, you could choose a specific sort of creature that you're looking for, whether it be a beast, a construct, or Ulrich. Uh, I believe the Minotaur is no longer in the field, so... Oh, really? Uh, not... No, yes, the Minotaur is out of the arena for you. Oh, okay. Uh, someone else beat the Minotaur. Someone else beat the Minotaur, got it. You don't know Was that in Ulrich? character. I don't know that, okay. Uh, I accidentally told you that just now when I was looking at my okay. notes for this session. Um, okay. Whoops. <laughs> oh, well. Well, we fought the, we fought the other two Minotaurs. Yes. I mean, they weren't the Minotaur. They were not the Minotaur champion. Anyway, the point is, you can search for encounters by being careful, rolling stealth, and rolling survivals, or you can try to hide and wait out the last hour so that you can finish the Fall Festival guaranteed. If you choose to hide and you are found, I will be choosing what you will be facing. If you face anything. Um, we've been pretty cautious this whole time. We've managed to conserve a lot of our resources. Um, I'm still a little scared to go after the big game. Uh, but maybe we could try to hunt for something less scary okay so you can choose to hunt for a beast or a construct or a humanoids so like another contracting team uh let's hunt for another contracting team okay let's see here if we never take any risks we we well, you know. I do know. Yes. All right. Uh, so, as you depart from where you are, I'm going to need three rolls from your team. I'm going to need a stealth check, I'm going to need a survival check, and I'm going to need a perception check. Here is my stealth check. Wow. That's pretty good. That, that's a dirty 20 at disadvantage. So it is. Okay. Uh, do you want to delegate the survival check to someone else? Um, I, I do. I'm proficient in survival, but I'm still rolling at disadvantage. Uh, do, okay. Well, what's my team's strongest survivalist? Uh, I don't have a ranger with me. So your best at survival would actually be Callie. She has okay. a fourteen in survival. Plus four. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's have Callie do that. Can I help her? You're at disadvantage, but you're proficient. Yeah. Then yes, you can help her. Okay, I will help her with her survival. She rolls so at advantage. She can roll at advantage. She got a fifteen. Cool. And then lastly, I need a perception check. Um. Uh, I'm going to assume Sabratha? you want Sabratha to do that. Yeah. Yeah. One moment. She got a 23 on her perception check. One moment. Okay. This is where that stealth roll comes into play. Your team creeps along through the alleys and rooftops, and as you're in the main street, you're looking down from a rooftop when you catch a three-man contracting team carefully picking their way between buildings in the main street. Sounds like it's time for an ambush. Uh... They don't know you're here, but I'm going to show you what this looks like. Okay.
Okay, this is the situation. This is what it looks like as you're looking down from this rooftop and you see the other three contractors picking their way along the side of a building. Okay, do we know them at all or are they grown up? They're contractors, they are not students. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Um, so we've got a little bit of distance on them, but we could theoretically strike from the shadows, so to speak. You could, yeah. Okay. Um, and there's one that looks like a caster. There is. Also, they don't look in perfect condition. They look as though they've seen like some they've, fights. They've seen some. They've seen some fights. Um. All right. Uh, yeah, I want to do it. So I'm gonna. All right. See if we could. Yeah. Okay, then roll initiative for your surprise round because they don't know you're here. Fucking. Oh. Oh. Oh, honey. Man, Stork is just have, really tired at this point. Stork's having a bad time. <laughs> His initiative is zero. Okay. All right. Sabratha goes first. How does she start? Um. You know. We had really good luck with Hold Person earlier. It's true. Which one would she uh, try to hold? It looks like there is a fighter, there is a mage, and there is a thief of some kind. Uh, I'm going to say, see if we can hold person the thiefy type. Okay. Sabratha so creeps out away from you a moment, and she casts hold person with her, with her last second level spell slot. Uh, oops, didn't mean to do that. Cast spell, and this individual will make a wisdom saving throw. DC is 14. Let's see here. He rolled a 14 on the die. Oh, so close. And he close. has no bonus. He succeeds oh. naturally. Holy shit. Uh, but now they are aware of you, but you yep, still have a surprise round. Yep, yep. Um, okay, next, Callie. Uh, I guess firebolt time. Firebolt? To, All right. Yeah, just to, to start us off. Yeah, she'll hurl a firebolt. Uh, which one is she focusing? Um, I'd hit the caster with that. Okay. Uh, that is a 21 to hit. The caster gets hit with a firebolt. Uh, the caster takes four points of fire damage. Okay. Okay. Well, that's something. All right. Uh, next, Milos. Uh, Milos is going to move just a little bit, and then he's going to Eldritch Blast that caster. Okay, go for it. Eldritch Blast! That's a pretty good roll. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Blink>. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you just, for some reason, the magic on this rooftop, you manifest a little pebble. Just, just like just like this little pebble dinks off of the caster, and they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, Skolna. Uh, she'll focus the spellcaster as well. She will attack with advantage. That is a 17 to hit, which does hit. Dealing this plus sneak attack. Okay, uh, that's 14 points of damage. The spellcaster is really not looking good. And now it's Stoic's turn. He will... I guess there's not that much he can do from up here, huh? Oh, throw a javelin. He can do that. Okay. He hurls a javelin at the spellcaster. Uh, and as it... He rolls a 14 to hit. Uh, as it barely misses her, you hear her say, Why is it always me?! Uh, poor caster. And then we begin combat. They will roll initiative as well. Uh, hold on a minute. OK, 
Okay, Sabratha goes first. Uh, she's out of second level spell slots, but she still has first levels. She can um, also toll the dead. She can toll the dead, and she they're all looking hurt. She'll probably do that. Yeah. Uh, which one does she try it on? Spellcaster? The, the spellcaster seems to be our huckleberry right now, yeah. Okay, the spellcaster will wisdom save. She's got a real wisdom save as compared to the rogue. That's a 19 plus... Yeah, she... That's a 24. She's fine. It was still worth a try. Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, Sabratha will curse and then step back. Back into cover. Uh, Callie. Uh, let's see. Um, Callie is going to... You know what? She will step out to this precipice. Um, climb down just a little bit. And we'll cast Agnazar Scorcher. No more Miss Nice Blaster. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, she does have to get a little closer. There she goes. Right there. Play Smisher Template. There it is. <laughs> just a, a surge of flame. And I need deck saves from all three of them. Uh, let me roll damage. Oh. Yeah, that's that's 16 points of fire damage. Uh, let's see. Dex save from him. Dex save from him. The rogue succeeds. No one's really surprised. The fighter fails. No one's really surprised. The spellcaster. Yeah. Succeeds. Barely. So, uh, they take... 16 points of fire halved. The spellcaster takes 8. Uh, spellcaster is barely standing. Fighter takes 16. Rogue takes 8. Okay. Uh, and as quickly as it appeared, the flames die away. Uh, it's now the spellcaster's turn. Angry and hurt and barely alive, she will bonus action drink a potion. Um, let me... There we go. Okay, she heals for seven. Uh, and then she will action cast a spell. Uh, what will she cast? You ask? I don't know. Let me look at what she has available because it's not much. Oh. She cast Fireball. Uh. Yeah. Right there. I need you and your team to make dexterity saving throws, please. Oh, boy. Everyone but Sabratha. Let's see what the damage roll is. Okay, that's a 23-point damage fireball. And sadly, that's a 13 on my deck save. Okay. That's a fail. Kelly. Succeeds. Skolna. Succeeds. Stoic. <laughs> Uh, fails. <laughs> okay, so... It would have been kind of ironic if he had succeeded on that deck save after losing have. his armor. Uh, so Stoic takes 23, you take 23, uh, Skolna and Kali both take 11. Ow. Uh, yeah, that hurt. Next, Milos. Uh, the spellcaster will move uh, back and away to here. Milos. Uh, Milos is going to cough. Um, I think he's going to bonus action use his last potion. Okay. Good call. 
Uh, let me just pull that out and roll it. Okay, could have been worse. Um, um, and then he's going to, for his action, uh, he's going to move forward to about here. Okay. And he's going to shoot an Eldritch Blast at that caster. Okay. Roll your spell attack. Who just ga almost ganked him with the fireball. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. Terrible. Okay, another rock. Poink off the spellcaster's head. And your little dog too. I, I think I've, I think I'm gonna use the rest of my movement to back up again. Okay. Uh, Skolna's turn. Skolna is also upset at that spellcaster and is going to loose an arrow at her. Natural 20. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she has eight hit points. I mean, yeah, you just, you ganked the shit out of her. Okay. Uh, so that's 12, 16... <laughs> 24, 36 points of damage to the spellcaster. Wow. Spellcaster super unconscious. An arrow just <laughs> right into the fucking forehead and she th thumps to the ground. Um, Skullnut will then... Uh, does she have a potion? Uh, which one? I'm sorry? Skullnut. Does Skullnut have a potion? Skullnut has a potion. She, is she not drinks it right okay. now. <laughs> because, ow. Uh, she heals 4-7. Uh, and then she will... She doesn't want to leave Callie hanging. She will stay out here. Uh, it's now the roguish type's turn. Uh, this individual is going to... run... into these bushes and bonus action hide. Okay, I need a perception check from Callie, Skulna, and Stoic. Hold on. Stoic sees him. Callie sees him. Skulna does not. Skulna rolled a natural one. All right. Uh, he will then emerge, trying to see which one he's caught unawares, sees it Skulna, and takes a pistol shot at her. Uh, a 17 does hit Skolna. Oh, no. Skolna gets shot for 11 points of damage. Whoa. She's still up. That's good. It is now the fighter's turn. Uh, the fighter will surge up towards Callie. Oh, no. And will make... Long sword attack on her. Uh, well, hold on. What the fuck? A 13 would hit, except she. No, it wouldn't. She has major armor up. Never mind. So his first attack misses. He swings again. And misses with an 11. Uh, the fighter will then bonus action, second wind. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Sorry, I'm it? being squished by a dog. It's okay. He heals for not very much, but it's something. Alright. Next. Stoic. Uh, Stoic is injured. Um... What? Does he have a potion? Um, we each started with two. I know he's used one. I'm okay. not sure if he used the other one. I'm going to say he's using it now. Okay. 
He heals for eight. He hops down and will run up to assist Callie, swinging the greatsword minus one as he does. Uh, does this hit? He does hit. Okay. Damage, minus one. He will pump a smite into it. Okay, so that's 22 points of damage to the fighter. Oh, very good. Um, Little redemption for Stoic there after. Yeah, he's tired of this. Um, <laughs> it's now Sabrath's turn. Sabratha is going to step up. Uh, she sees the warrior and the rogue. She's going to toll the dead one of them. Yeah. Well, she has one spell slot. She has one first level spell slot left. She'll save it. She'll toll the dead. Uh, she'll wisdom save the fighter, I think. DC is 14. He rolls an 18. Okay. Well, she tried. Uh, now it's Callie's yep. turn. Callie's in melee with the fighter, which is not really where she wants to be. May he disengage? Yeah, she'll disengage. I know it's not her. I know it's not her favorite thing to do is to not use an action to blow something up. But she will climb up onto the <laughs> roof, and this is where she ends her movement. Okay. Uh, spellcasters on this one moment. Okay. Milos, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, Milos's turn. He's going to move back up to the edge of the roof. Uh, does he see the rogue? Yes. Okay then he's gonna uh try to shoot the rogue with an eldritch blast okay go ahead yeah that won't never do mind it. yeah so he runs up to the edge of the roof whiffs and then ducks back again uh okay skullness turn skull is going to take a shot at the one in melee rolls a natural one. Okay. Oh, man, the dice. Okay. Yep. She will fall back as well. Not all the way. She'll be here, just so she won't fall off the roof. Uh, it's now the rogue's turn. The rogue. Hmm. I can go for one of you on the roof. It kind of wants to deal with your healer. But also Stoics and Melee with the fighter. I'm going to roll to see what he'll do. Okay, he's going for Sabratha. Uh, he will duck into this bush and hide. I need a perception check from everyone. Lots of dice going all over the dang place. Okay. Skull in the season. That's it. Wow, okay. He rolled real well. 21 is pretty good at disadvantage, but yep. okay. He rolled a 24. Very good. Yes. Uh, he will then emerge and take a shot at Sabratha. With advantage. Natural 20. Fuck. Okay. Uh, hold on. Wait. I'm going to use my inspiration and have you re-roll that natural 20 on Sabratha. Okay. I've been holding on to that inspiration for a long time, and I'm going to use it here. That's fair. I'll re-roll. Don't crit my healer to death. I will try not to. <laughs> uh, the natural 20 becomes a 21 to hit. Well, it'll still hit, 
but it's not a crit. It does still hit, but it does not uh, potentially insta-kill her. Sabratha so takes 14 points of damage. And she is still up. Okay. So now the fighter's turn. The fighter's going to swing at Stoic. It has to beat a 13 to hit. Oh, it couldn't do it on Callie. It hit. Okay. Uh, Stoic takes... 12 points of slashing damage. Uh, he's going to... Goliath... Uh... Mountain's resistance and have that damage. And then it'll uh, he'll swing again. He hits. Uh, and then Stoic takes 12 points of damage and falls unconscious. Uh, he's death warded. Oh, you're right. He has one hit point. He has one hit point. The fighter sees this and says, Why won't you fall? And Stoic says, I wish. Now it's Stoic's turn. Uh, Stoic swings the greatsword at the fighter. Does Stoic have any more spell slots? I don't think so. Didn't he he has one. He has one left. Uh, well, he smited before, uh, but a oh. 20 hits. Okay. Uh, yep, you can't roll one, Stoic. That's 14 points of slashing damage. The fighter falls to zero hit points, and Rick comes back with one, because he's a half-orc. Because <laughs> he's a half-orc. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The half-orc's like, why won't you fall? And immediately... Same shit. Sabratha's turn. Uh, Sabratha sees this as getting dire here and is going to try and toll the dead again on the fighter. Just to try and get him to fall the hell down. Uh, that is a failure. He rolls a 10. He takes any damage and he falls unconscious. So. Okay. Callie. Uh, seeing the rogue no longer hidden, uh, Callie's gonna hurl a firebolt at him. Uh, a 16 hits. And she deals one point of fire damage. Okay. Oh, the dice. Okay. The dice. Milos. Uh, Milos is going to move. Uh, he's going to climb down from the roof. Uh, he's going to use the rest of his movement. Um, he's going to use, he's going to shoot an Eldritch Blast at that rogue. Okay. Uh. He's going to miss. Okay. <laughs> Um, and he's going to use his bonus action to try and nab a uh, totem off the warrior. Okay, the warrior has three <laughs> totems around his neck. Okay, so D3? Yep. You grab a real one. Okay. But it does not appear to but be their theirs. real one. Okay. So just add another real to Milos here. I mean, that's my turn. Okay, it's now Skullna's turn. Uh, Skulna is going to run off this side. Bonus action hide it in this brush. Uh, the rogue does not see where she went. She will emerge and attack with advantage. Uh, 
Natural 20. Okay, uh, that's 12 plus sneak attack, 24 plus 31 points of damage. The rogue falls unconscious. Okay. And that is the end of the combat for the moment. Um, I'd like to search them for anything that is useful before we take their totems off. Okay. Uh, Need Callie's help with that. Yep, yeah, Callie will help you. Uh, go ahead. I will have Callie roll investigation. How how uh, how big is this half orc's armor? Uh, the half orc is wearing what looks like a breastplate, medium armor, and a shield. Um, okay. I mean, how big is he related to me and stoic? You're all medium. Okay. How long would it take to get his breastplate off and put it on? Ten minutes. Five min ten minutes. Uh, also, you don't it's a wanna, little weird. You don't want to be it, it, here. Uh, yeah, we don't. We don't want to be here for ten minutes doing that. So never mind. Additionally, like they're not dead. Dead. Yeah, the they're unconscious. <laughs> the contractors yeah. will be like, "Who took my armor? What the fuck?" Uh, yeah. With it a twenty-six. I'm not gonna actually like steal from. With a yeah. twenty-six, you find one healing potion and one potion of dragon's breath okay uh who, which of us is the worst off right now stoic has one hit point stoic. yeah give the potion to stoic okay he heals for 10 actually uh give him the potion of dragon's breath too because he's the one who's most likely to be up in melee okay um and then let's let's just loot their tokens how many tokens we get Okay, so you time it, you pull all the tokens off at once, uh, mm -hmm. you get three real tokens and seven fake totems. Okay, I'm gonna distribute that. I'm gonna give, I'm just gonna distribute that so that uh, Milos will take another real one, uh, Stoic will take another real one, and Skulna will take another real one, and then everyone will take a fake one Three, four, three, four. And that leaves uh, two more fakes, which Milos is just going to put on himself. Okay. He's so looking, he's really pimped out right now. You have uh, you have forty minutes left in the fall festival as you finish this encounter. Uh, I think I think we want to hide at least for a little bit and like take a break after the the bronchiness that was that yes uh see if we can find us a place to, to hold up and like breathe we can plan on that 10 minutes. for next session for next time yeah okay so i hope you're enjoying this tense ending to your fall festival ah! uh and to everyone who is listening or at work hi, hi pen we love you and we can't wait to see you next time good night everyone